new quiz on the block, the tour, came about so that we could take the fantastic work of these artists to loads of different audiences throughout the UK. And new quiz on the road, the film, came about so that anyone with an internet connection can come on the tour with us. The thinking behind the project was that we wanted to take the work that we made at the Marlborough with lots of amazing LGBTQ plus artists and take them to parts of the country where they might not otherwise ordinarily be able to tour. So on this tour we decided to go to Brighton, Bradford, Forkston, Blackpool and Hastings. We decided to take on the road some of our favourite artists that we often collaborate with as well as commissioning some regional local artists to join us. One of the artists that we brought on the road was uh, Rachel Young, who brought along Night Clubbing, which is an explosive performance bringing visceral live music and intergalactic visions to start a revolution. Also on the road with us was a fantastic artist called Hester Chillingworth, who performs in the persona of a non-binary child called Shorty. And the performance looks at the position of the non-binary child and the relationship with the mind when the body is under attack. Another artist is Stacey Makishi, who's a legend, and for this tour, Stacey is bringing post-apocalyptic cryptic cocktail of performances. Also on the road with us is Marikas Cry Cry Cry, a fantastic performance artist and choreographer. And in this performance, He's Dead, they utilise powerful choreographic skills to address melancholia, beginning with the question, was Tupac depressed? Our compare was Ophelia Bits who is a neo-cabaret performance artist and singer. The local artist that we worked with in Brighton is the fantastic C Sharp, who's an award-winning poet, and they're turning their hand to performance to make the show Take This Off My Hands, Brother Insect, offering an unorthodox glimpse into what it means to be an outsider carrying the weight of otherization. As a special treat in Blackpool, we were joined by the amazing Oozing Group, who is an apocalyptic, green, post-drag, autistic queen. Sabira did a fantastic job as our production assistant on the tour and they're also a performer themselves so they hopped up on the stage in the Hastings performance to share their spoken word about being queer, black and angry. Our local artists in Blackpool were the amazing Bellez and they explored the common misconceptions and stereotypes of lesbian relationships. In Folkestone we were joined by our local artist Reed Dudley Pearson and their performance Bodied was a punk performance dragged out of our struggle against the material totality of neoliberal capitalism. I feel like it's the first part of a long journey. I think that this first tour has been a big kind of like first date with us meeting people in Bradford and Blackpool and folks in the Hastings. We've met them before and organisations before, but we haven't met communities maybe. So I think that there's a kind of getting to know you phase and I'm really excited to see how this is going to unfold over the next couple of years. But yeah, I think in lots of ways we have found audiences. Good evening my friends, welcome to New Quiz on the Block and to the Marlborough Theatre, thank you very much. I kind of think we are really lucky to be in Brighton where it's so easy. I just walk 15 minutes down the road and I can see performers that are like really breaking the mold and like I can see people that look like me being celebrated in kind of performance scene and I think it must be really hard to not have that and I think it's really important that people be able to see queer, trans, amazing, POC, like fucking rad performances and just it kind of, sometimes like it gives permission. I remember when I first started coming to like going to queer shows and stuff in London and in Brighton, seeing some of that stuff like gave me permission to like be a bit weirder and like be a bit like oh shit I could I could maybe I could get up on a stage. I do live in a small town near Brighton and there's nothing like this where I live. Um, there's nothing like that. So yeah, I, I, I'm glad there's a queer community, a queer performance space because it's so necessary and it's I think it is very rare. <laughs> Ta -da. Hiya. <laughs> I'm just getting the box office form ready for our show tonight. It's sold out in Brighton and we've got really good ticket sales for Hastings tomorrow. So 
Fingers crossed it's going to be really, really good. I'm so excited to see the performances. Oh, my friends, thank you so much for coming out to join us this evening. This is such an exciting night. This is one of the Marlborough's most like beloved and most progressive and fantastic projects. It was amazing seeing it in the Marlborough, actually, because I hadn't been involved in the creation of it. So it's really wonderful, actually, to be sat in, in the theatre and experience a show um, that was created by the Marlborough that I just just have it just wash over me and all the acts were incredible. What we are doing tonight, my dears, is we're not seeking to define queerness, but we are attempting some descriptions of the multiplicities of expression within it. What do they look like under there? Beneath the thin layers of darkness? How does it feel to wear them around like a top hat or a wristwatch or an accessory for tomorrow's hate crime? Thanks for looking after me. I'm going to tip over like this so I don't upstage myself. I'm totally okay. I'm totally okay. I'm totally okay. I'm totally okay. I'm I went to the Hastings performance and it was absolutely amazing. There were so many people there. The audience engagement officer that we'd worked with, Ben, had done an amazing job in just going into different community groups, speaking to different people and saying, hey, we've got something that we think you're going to be into. I think New Quiz on the Block gave me a chance to say, come along, give it a try, come and see what we've got to offer you and you might make some friends by coming along. And those that did come did experience that and I'm still engaged with those slightly more isolated people who were bowled over by new quiz on the block and it opened up a whole new horizon for them. There is, there is stuff happening, but of course there can always be more, can't there? Um, and I think what's going to be brilliant about New Careers on the Block and about this project in general is building, building on what's already successfully happening here in Hastings and really creating a space where we can all come together, you know, and that's what's most important. That's why I do what I do, because I love just creating those spaces where we can come together and we can be what we want to be with no judgement and feel at home and feel relaxed and watch performances and use performance to think about our lives and how we interact with each other. Um, and I know that Hastings, the people here are just going to be super open to that because that's the kind of town it is. There are one or two venues like um, the St Leonard's and On the Rocks in Hastings which are kind of specifically LGBTQI plus friendly. So there is, the, there is a, a, a community and a network but there's also a hinterland of, of members of that community who aren't visible. Right into Hastings. There was, it was a different thing but it felt like people were there because they wanted to be and they were curious to see and they were basically on side and up for it so um, yes yeah, so that was good. I was absolutely blown away on the night because it was a hugely challenging show. It was brilliant to see it in Hastings. It was raw, vital, challenging, exciting, thrilling, um, it was just absolutely brilliant and I felt very privileged to be there and it was great to have it on the doorstep in Hastings. Reverse racism. That's what they call it. When they're stuck in their feelings about some something or other. Someone called them Becky when their name is actually Hannah. Someone told them that their Post Malone cornrows got them looking like a scarecrow. Someone snatched off their messy white girls night out bindi. Someone called them crackers, caspers, hellmans, mayo sapiens, enemies of the sunlight, basic ass, dusty abomination, pasty white devils, dusty ass, no lip have an ass, pale demons, nasty pink eared motherfuckers who always gotta be making out with their dogs. I think the most fascinating thing for us has been um, understanding the local ecologies of each place and also at the same time very uh, grounding. 
Like, it became very apparent how privileged we are here in the South. And it kind of took us a while to understand each particular context and each particular space. Each space has its own politics, its own nuances, its own interactions with its audiences or with new audiences. And each of them have a very different kind of um, way of uh, forming a relationship with, with, with artists and with um, audiences. So yeah, it was, I think for us, that was the, that was the biggest challenge was understanding each individual context. This gives it a real fresh beat. Something, you know, something really different. For me, that that's where this sort of like really makes makes a difference. It's been um, really funny, like amazingly funny. It's been so nice. It's been refreshing to actually have more of that in Hastings. And there's a big sort of open community that are not clicky. So really, it's a brilliant space for it because people are really up for it. I was really inspired by people that are making it happen in the place that they grew up a lot of the time. You can't have conversations unless you start conversations, you know, and I think somebody or some some platform such as New Quiz on the Block just has to jump off the diving board in a way and do it. But I do think it's really important and um, somebody fairly youngish came up to me after the Hastings show and said, oh, that's fantastic, there's all this work happening here and I've really started to come here and see this and it's really exciting for me. So things like that I think are really important because if you don't see yourself represented on stage, not literally, but if you don't see possible spaces that you imagine you could be represented on stage, then you don't think there, you can be up there. So I just think I just think there's a lot of talking that goes on in rooms and it's really important just to do stuff as well, so I think it's really important. I don't perform because I need a round of applause at the end of the day. I perform because I like touring, I like the lifestyle. So for me, Bradford was, yeah, that was like, this is exactly it. Like getting so inspired by how other people do it. Oh hell! I feel like we are like a little community and then we kind of form these little satellite communities in the spaces that we go to and give people an opportunity to just see something different, like question um, their ideas about what performance or queer performance can be. When I first started making work, I felt like like I'd done loads of workshops with Stacey, like literally when I first started making things, I was in awe of this woman, like, ah, she's amazing. And now I get to perform alongside her. That's like, yeah, really, really special. Oh, oh my God, look! Oh, 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 oh. Is it a mushroom or is it a rectangle? It becomes really important for those people specifically, you know, I'm talking about the queer, trans, in my case, the black and brown people who may never see themselves represented in programs 
that get shown around here. And if I think about what I, where I grew up and the kind of work that I saw, I never saw people that looked like me in the shows that I was being brought to watch. And when I did, finally, like after I kind of like made my own choices to like see things that I thought would where, where I would feel like I was represented, it changed my, it actually changed my life and actually what made me want to be a choreographer. Whereas if I've never seen that before, I would have, I would have been doing something else with my life. Yeah, and getting information from an audience who has never encountered my work before is really, it's like such a pleasure. I'm trying to just turn this off. I'm really finding some now. Remember what I was complaining about? Now yeah, I can do this. And now they're really coming. I think it's really important that whoever comes into contact with the work that's being proposed on this tour will be beneficial for people who feel like there's no one else out there like them or when they when you grow up in a place where you feel like the kind of networks of support are there but not in the same way or with the same caliber or the same infrastructure as in Brighton or London or any other kind of major queer center or city. Can I hold it with you? <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're thinking, oh no the lesbian with the suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> she comes with some baggage. <laughs> It went really well. Like, I, it's hard to tell because all of the emotions that I go through when I'm performing sometimes eclipse. Like in the moment right after when I'm when I leave and people are clapping, I'm like not there, or somehow I'm just like not. I don't know where I'm at. So I think it went well, and I feel like there was a really nice vibe in the audience. It's always nice when an audience who you don't know at all is like quite supportive. It just felt like people were really there with an open gaze and a kind of open mind about what they were going to see and I really appreciated that. And I feel like the work that I was doing had a, had a place and a role there. So it's good. Love Bradford. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Like, it was varied. Um, I was a bit flagged when uh, that woman was shagging that cabbage first off. <laughs> but I thought it was fantastic. Giving birth to the Brussels sprout. Uh, when she started speaking, uh, she said something really profound. I've not actually been to any theatre performances, so this is really cool. I'm really enjoying it. It's got this really bizarre reputation. I think, like, two years ago, it was voted the worst place to live in the country. And I was like, that is absolutely wild because I've lived in five different cities now and I think it's the best one that I've lived in. So there's something about that inherent racism that exists in the media and in the approach that people have to culture and trying to make things happen. It just feels like there's a real, even though it's one of the most diverse cities I've lived in, it feels like that diversity is not used as a real exceptional resource. It's been a pleasure, thank you so much. We will be back whether you like it or not. We have contractual obligations. So, oh bloody done love. Woo! We put three quiz in the van. <laughs> yeah, three quiz in the train. <laughs> and let's see, it's a race to Blackpool. Let's see who makes it first. How long is it that I've got? Can I get fire? Hey, can I have two mini McFlurries? Smarties. Smarties. Yeah, Smarties. Smarties. Yeah. Um, two apple pies. Yeah. Um, and a black coffee. Yeah, and a snow. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Working with the cast of New Quiz was amazing. <laughs> 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 it's okay, we can roll with it. Okay, go. Who are you? My name's Rachel. What do you do? <laughs> I think that all of us, yeah, really leaning in to um, our distinctions in many ways was what made it a really exciting show. People so genuinely excited to be performing with each other, that was just, that was so nice, I've forgotten what your original question was. <laughs>
was very interesting to take a group of a bunch of queers, um, uh, non-apologetic bunch of queers, uh, to Blackpool. So it was very wide audience, but at the same time, what we had that we didn't have too much in the other in the other context was a much older audience actually that uh, that were so hungry for something different that was really nice uh, it was I'm really glad we reached those people because I know that there's a huge wave of um, new generation queer kids who are hanging about and wanting to know yeah. like, um, and we come across a lot of them and it's almost like you know what we were saying before like, like we feel a little bit like a magnet for them because we know like when we're talking to them kind of like what they're trying to express. I'm very passionate about young girls who feel like they may be gay or anything other than straight to have other people that they can kind of be around to inspire that next step of just coming out and I, and, and I just don't feel like there's anywhere modern enough or nice enough. In terms of this type of activity in Blackpool it's not really been done before. So we know that those ticket sales are quite extraordinary and we're really proud of it. What has happened here, just from trying to put this on, is quite radical. To me, queerness kind of holds both a like, non-normative gender and sexuality, but also the kind of the, like, radical and transformative politics. And I think that's why it kind of felt so interesting being on tour in these places where there are definitely gay scenes in a lot of the places we went to, but like especially I'm thinking of Blackpool again, definitely a gay scene there, was there necessarily a queer scene quite as much. It's really important to break into these uh, these things and go into the spaces that you wouldn't necessarily first think or don't necessarily come to mind immediately. I grew up in Norfolk and there was no visibly queer things at all. It wasn't until I went to London when I was 17 and like snuck into a party and I saw Johnny Woo performing for the first time did I realise that you could like perform as a queer person who could be this like this queer and like break down barriers and move through the, the walls of categories of identity in this way. And like I never really ever got to see that model before and stuff like that. I think it's great. And also as well is I think that it's uh, it's great for us to be able to come and see these places as well. What's been your favourite space so far, Anna? Mm. Oh, good question. Um, where did we go? <laughs> I don't know, like, I kind of liked Blackpool actually. That was cute. It's like a little, like, house. Yeah, probably Blackpool. I like Blackpool as well. It's a place. It was funny. We had a really good night out. Had a good dance. Dance. Was much needed. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> but what is the letter A when you get right down to it? Here, why of course, it is a single point that moves forward through time. And it becomes the new point with the memory of itself as the old point. However, it knows within this, at some point, it was one point, an undifferentiated point, one with no worries and no cares. But it fell from this Eden and now it's prohibited from ever returning back there by the same knowledge that gives it the memory that it may travel forth through life. <laughs> <laughs> the boob <laughs> and the vagina. So worth seeing, yeah, I'm so pleased that I, ca I came to that. The artists were great, you know, it was different. I've, you know, I've never seen anything alternative like that before. It was great. I was really pleased to see these artists come to Blackpool uh, because we're sort of well known for cabaret and variety but it's very sort of traditional and it's nice to sort of test people's boundaries and to challenge people in some ways. So it's great that we've had the opportunity to see these artists but also for these artists to come and experience Blackpool because there's nowhere else like it. I thought it was absolutely great. I've just been saying to some of the other people that I know here today that it's, it's such a good opportunity to see something so diverse in one of these coastal towns. I'm from here, I have been for the past 28 years, but I'm in the creative industry also, so it's really refreshing to just see something that's completely different to everything else that we kind of get here. I mean, there is a queer scene here, but it's kind of very much tailored to the aesthetic of the town. Um, <laughs> it's difficult really because, you know, I'm a queer artist in this town as well and I feel kind of unre unrepresented 
a lot of the time. It was absolutely fantastic. I was really looking forward to it. I thought it would be good, but it was magnificent. The performances were outstanding. It's just so fantastic to see something so different here in Blackpool, where it belongs. I really loved it. All of those artists were high level, right? I mean, they were unbelievable. Really, really fantastic. And actually really great to see someone local in there as well. There's a lot of things that aren't spoken about around here, like yeah. Falklands is like a gay culture, but like there is a lot of this sort of thing here, and it's so refreshing. The thing is, you guys, Rumi says, it's not our task to seek love. No, our job is to find the walls that we've built to keep love out. <sighs> Please love me. It's been a really nice way of touring. We're touring with so many people. It's like having a big family, just having a big support network with you. And I feel like that's something really important when you go to different spaces because you never know how it's going to be received. But it, it's yeah, it's been good to kind of experience that as a yeah as a group. It feels really nice to be like part of what is a really eclectic mix of work. Um, and lots of kind of different styles and generationally and culturally and um, you know yeah everyone's from like lots of different places. Hiya, you know. <laughs> I've never had an experience like that or been on a tour with a group of artists whose work are all quite different but powerfully pushing both formal and like identitarian and um, aesthetic boundaries in a way that's like productive and fruitful and interesting for audiences. Uh, so it's been really good. Just some of those interactions with people who were like, wow, like this is really great to see. It made me kind of feel a bit like, like, oh, that's really important actually for people to see this collective us as a collective. Also on race, I think it was really important to see a show that is billed as new quiz on the block doesn't actually mention race and racism or anything like that but has the majority of performers actually at most of the shows that we were the majority putting on a show about queerness yeah some people's work was touching on race and was touching on all of these things but you know people wouldn't necessarily have brought that assumption when they see new quiz on the block and i think that's really really important the kind of concepts the way we think about queer is very whitewashed a lot of the times so i think it's really important that people could come and then be confronted with loads of people of color doing amazing stuff i'm really honored to be on tour and with such amazing artists that inspire me so much being a part of all the other artists yeah. is being like into all as the in other like artists lineup, yeah. as in we're just like gonna have a massive group <laughs> orgy afterwards because of the new queers on the block baby and that's the way we roll Last time I was on a train and it wasn't cancelled. <laughs> and that just puts pressure on people yeah. who are touring. I also right? can't remember last time Sabira remembered a phone charger as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's real. Kind of. <laughs> okay, um, I'm showing you the back door, backstage exit entrance. This is in. in the quarter house. I think that's what it's called. And the, this is the auditorium where the audience would sit. Um, we'll be doing our shows on here. You're allowed to take up as much as you like of it. Um, you shouldn't go in the audience. Well, no, I think you can. I think you're allowed to go in the audience if you want. In this show, anyway. Okay, this is the hypertension group. Now, let's find out if it works. <laughs> I've got hypertension. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Who's the purple for? It's for um, a general. Uh, colour to represent queer. We are queer. I was born again Christian 
and I probably would have been on the opposite side of this divide. I mean, I'm, I'm really grateful that I had a change of heart and that I fell in love and that person just happened to be a woman and now I'm a queer. You know, how great is that? And that, you know, we can go from town to town and say, you can, you know, to spread the queer gospel, you can be whoever you need to be. And you could, you could respect and love me for whoever I love. Even outside of the queerness, it's really made me think about community and also audiences' experience of community. Because I think New Quiz on the Block, it doesn't just bring work, it kind of brings a community, a, a micro community. And I think that can be as important for people who maybe don't have com a community as, as can individual pieces of work. Night clubbing. <laughs> Tom, night clubbing. Tom White's remix. Queerness is not like this inaccessible or like elite bubble kind of ideology or la la these are we're, we're like actual people with actual concerns and questions and believe it or not we also that also extends to art practice it seems like quite basic but we're proposing a kind of humanity or humanizing of the queer subject that i think is important for everybody to see especially since the popular image of queerness or like the representations that we see are not the ones that actually highlight what it is to be a queer person in Britain today. Being queer means, for myself, being who you are. Like just being real and um, standing by yourself, saying, okay, this is, this is who I am. And even amongst queer, you might be queer, you might be other, but because of the love and a kind of inner reserve that maybe you're standing with other and when I say queer you know I'm thinking my Angelo you know I'm thinking of, of, of other people who are not like sexually queer but I just think of people who had to take a stand they stand with me so I'm not alone here Folkestone is a small town and it's the sort of place where you wouldn't really expect to see any kind of established network of uh, queer people making art or people making performance art of any kind really. So it's actually quite surprising to find that there's a really um, strong hub of artists that work there and who invite other people to come in and work as well. Um, in particular there's a space called Performance Space. The people that run Performance Space are fantastic artists and they're really lovely people and they're really radical. I think anybody who's considering making work or showing their work outside of like large metropolitan centres and big cities should really give it a look. It's like a really good connected space to get to the rest of Europe. Yeah, I recommend it to anybody who's considering somewhere outside of a big city to go and make queer performance work. My experience of performance art is not particularly uh, a queer one until very recently, so I'm always very open to just see queer people create new work, like, and I always kind of approach that with a very open mind. As an audience member, I think it's probably a really nice thing for them to watch. It's kind of, it kind of takes them to different places and asks them to think of different things. Um, and it's been really well received, yeah. Yeah, everyone I spoke to like, absolutely loved it. We've had loads of positive tweets, um, Instagram posts, Facebook comments, you name it, we got it. <laughs> We have been traipsing our little carcasses up and down the, car the country and the tonight is the last night of our tour. <laughs> I think it's the first time I've ever seen anything like this on this scale and I'm just blown away about like how good it was. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. It's going to come and analyse you and look and see if you're dressed well, if you look nice. The only people that he told to get out of the queue were either not white, yes I repeat, not white, or you would say not really dressed or extremely good looking like video vixen. Oh I loved it. I am um, very interested. Yeah, I love yeah. it. It really makes you think. Um, yeah. Like, I think it's, sometimes we're, some bits were really like, emotional and some bits yeah. were so happy, which, yeah, I loved. And some bits touched me really personally as well. Yeah. Just, like, I think it was, they kind of cleverly wrapped up really interesting topics and like humour, but yeah, it really covered a lot of it. It's the first thing I've ever really been to that's been like this, so yeah. 
was really good. It was, it was really enjoyable. It was amazing. It was so much talent, so much fun, actually. Yeah. It was quite heart-wrenching in places as well. It had some great moments. Folks is actually really good. It's got a really good creative scene, really great creative community. So, yeah, but come back. Please come back. Yeah, since I saw the Marlboro was doing something down here, I was like, okay, we're seeing that. <laughs> This is our journey from the back from Blackpool yes, the other day. We we listened to uh, lots of girl bands. Oh. I have a girl band playlist. It's now on my phone actually. Is it? Yeah. Oh yeah, there you go. It's got Sugar Babes, Spice Girls Mega Mix. Yeah, just a lot. To be honest, it was a, a lot, lot of like really niche Spice Girls. Yeah, a lot. That of I'd never heard before. B sides but... and rarities. Yeah. If you call yourself a queer, you should go out and buy the Spice Girls third album called Forever. <laughs> The new quiz on the block commission, I felt like suddenly someone was saying, okay, so like we totally accept you for how you are, now you can make a piece of work about it and that's absolutely fine. And for so long I'd been kind of making stuff around that very in very abstract terms that I'd sort of gotten on the back foot or gotten quite defensive about um, including like aspects of my identity or aspects of my um, queerness in my work. So when someone someone says like, yeah, no, that's absolutely fine. You can do that. It was like, oh, cool. Uh, Marlboro have been really generous in like keeping in touch with me and looking after me, and um, they're really excited about uh, me making new work and have um, offered me a residency at the theatre to come in and um, try some new ideas out. So it's nice to know that it didn't just stop with the one performance that I had in Folkestone, but it could potentially be something that is like a continuing uh, development. I felt really cared for on this tour, you know, just people willing to to take my hand and to to even just get me from backstage to on stage and I don't know I think it's um I feel like as a company we really try to care for each other. I didn't know I don't know that I knew what to expect really before coming here like I know some of the artists that were going to be um performing and some of them I didn't know at all some of them I know as people not as artists so it's not been what I expected because I had no idea what work people were going to be making and I had no idea of how it would fit together but it really like works as a whole piece of work and also the people that we've met along the way I kind of didn't expect to meet them. The thing that I've been really proud of with this project is the kind of generosity of spirit that I think all of the different artists, audiences, organisations, all the people involved in it have brought to it is that there's a like genuine willingness and appetite to learn about how we might do this better next time, how we might do things differently and what we can all kind of learn from each other's perspectives which I think is super important. From where we started with this project and where we are now, having finished the first tour, looking ahead to the second one, the main thing that's changed is just our aims and our attitudes to what we're doing as a project. Beforehand we, th we had this idea and I think it's because we were misinformed. We hadn't experienced what it's like to perform in Hastings, Bradford, Blackpool, Folkestone. We'd visited these places and we'd met with the partners, but we'd not put a show on. And that experience is invaluable because having done that, you connect with the people who are there, you find out what they're doing, what they're interested in, the nights that are happening, the support networks that are in place in all of these different places. It's not about us bringing the queer culture. It's about engaging with the fantastic people there doing their thing. It's about using this platform with the film and also the platform that the tour has um, to highlight to other artists across the UK and theatre makers and audiences that these different places that we've been to are really exciting places to go if you want to find and experience different queer cultures. It certainly was fruitful for us to kind of look at what queer cultures already exists in the different places that we visited mm -hmm. and uh, kind of help us to embed ourselves in those communities um, and not just come in and expect for us to be um, providing something you know new and unique and special and also if we're going to create queer networks and queer systems of support across the country then we can't just come in one night do a show and leave i think that's antithetic to what we're trying to do here. So we've changed a little bit what we're going to do for the next leg of the tours. And instead of uh, just doing one show here and there, we are creating and working with local artists and the commission artists that we have already 
and our partners to ensure that we have a broader presence in the, in the local communities, but also that we embed ourselves even further and work with everyone there to sort of create systems of support for local queer artists as much as for national kind of based queer artists as well. It was just so mad to see my spreadsheet turn into a thing. <laughs> like when people are just names on a column and, and times and prices and then and everyone's here in Brighton and they've all got the train on time and they're in the right place. So I was like, wow, it worked. <laughs> yeah, so now I'm kind of exhausted from talking so much. I need a little nap. Bye Rosie, excuse me. It was a good first date. Let's have a second one. This is Ophelia. Hi. Like I said, Ophelia's in charge and does all the introductions and all the in-betweens and at the end. And it's like, um, I said it's like a, the parent. Yeah, it's sort of somewhere between your mum and a dominatrix. <laughs> Which is a great word and if you can spell it, I'll give you 10p. D-O-M-I-N, domin, A-T-R-I-X. Nice, I wish I could have got 10p now. 10p, 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 give me 10p, give me 10p, give me, yes! <laughs> so, any more questions? I think after that, probably not. You've done it. <laughs> done it. Thank Shorty's you. Hour of calm. Enjoy the show.